That literally frightens me. This is the worst they've been. <laughs> crackly, crackly. If that's a new baseline, do I just wet myself? <laughs> All right, let's talk about Capturia. Capturia is the first triple combination drug to treat the underlying cause of CF and not just its symptoms by combining Ivacaptor, Tezacaptor, and Alexacaptor. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how it started and next week's episode, we'll tell you how it's going. Now, for those of you who don't know, I didn't react well to the news of Capturia being approved. The anxiety was high, my friends. Higher than people in coffee shops. So much so that when it got delivered on the 2nd of November, I could not stir, and I wasn't sure if I'd ever be able to stir. Which may seem a little ungrateful to some people, but honestly, in the headspace I was in, it would not have been the right time. I came to the realization that I may not be able to control what Captrio does, but there are three things that are in my control which would help me to stir. First of which, I had to do it on my own. So I asked the people around me not to ask me when I was gonna stir or ask me anything about it. So the first that I was hiding it meant that in some of the following footage you're about to see there are some clips where I'm talking a little bit quieter that is the reason why the second thing was to stay off social media as much as possible because I kept getting triggered and at the time it was everywhere the third thing I became hyper aware of all the side effects not just the few that I mentioned in the booklet but all of them and that may seem counterproductive but actually this is the reason that I'm grateful for that anxiety because it made me aware of all the possible outcomes and it really cemented the fact that everyone reacts differently for example I always thought that everyone got the purge, but no, some people don't get it, some people get it two weeks after, or maybe even two months after. This is what ultimately pushed me to start, because I was like, if I never try, then I'm never gonna know. And what comes will comes, and we'll just have to meet it when it does. Am I right? 18 days after it got delivered, I started. Let me take you back to the 20th of November. Today is the day I am um, not thinking about it because if I think about it too much, then it will just never happen. My weight is down there at the moment, but that's because I'm on Cipro and it's making me really nauseous. 98 and my heartbeat is at 100 because I'm like, <laughs> lung function, here we go. which is a 70%. Right, what do I do? <laughs> Why is there two of them? What? What? <laughs> I haven't read any instructions. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, I think I don't know. Let's do a huff test. <laughs> okay, that was, that, <laughs> that doesn't normally stuff there, but. <clears throat> but I did go for a run this morning and that was really hard. But I think that's just because I'm unfit. But there is some cracklies down there, you know what I mean? So. Here we go. It's okay, okay, it's okay. Don't need to panic. It's fine. It's fine. I feel really nervous. All right, it's been exactly four hours and nothing so far. I know it's different for everyone. Doesn't mean it's not working, Kate. It's okay. I try not to run away in my mind, but I want it all to, you know, get up and get out. You know, as my dad would say, get out and walk. We are eight hours in, no purge. If you're not familiar with the purge in a CF context, then it refers to coughing up a load of mucus. It's the glamorous life for me. My sinuses are killing me and I can feel a lot of stuff dripping down the back of my throat, which is from my sinuses. My throat also hurts. <clears> Having <throat> to clear it a lot like that. That clock's wrong, no purge. But it's been more than usual. I don't usually cough much up anyway, but that, that, was, that was a lot. And I was like, oh, all right. On. And it's very sticky. TMI? I don't know. My sinuses are absolutely killing me. I can breathe in in a deeper layer, level, level, but I can still feel stuff on the surface level. I don't even know if anyone will see it. will understand that. Hello, I'm very shiny. It's just skincare, but my skin doesn't care. <laughs> Throat's quite sore, you can probably hear it's gone quite low. But let me just do a half. <laughs> oh, my voice has gone really low again. I feel like I could be the voiceover guy. Stay tuned for season two coming to a cinema near you. I feel like I could do this all night, but I probably should just go to bed this Christmas. Is it going to be in lockdown? Stay tuned. Season 2 of the COVID Christmas Crisis. I need to go, I've been doing this for five minutes.
We are on day two. I woke up feeling really nauseous this morning, but again, I think that's just from a sip right through. Out the morning to about two o'clock, felt like things were really loose and I was coughing up stuff. For sure, more than I ever have. <clears throat> still playing on my throne. Still shifting quite a bit. I have real trouble trying to get it up. I found this morning that sometimes when I coughed, I could get it up really easily. Other times, I was retching. It just feels like it's really loose. Like I've done a ton of hypertonic saline. <laughs> that really hurts. That was up by 4%. Incredible for one day. But since about 2 o'clock, I've not coughed up anything at all. My sinuses have been killing me today though. I'm not getting any sinus drainage down the back of my throat. I have had a sore throat though. There have been times today where I felt quite weak, faint, not great. <laughs> Again, that could be a mix of the Cipro, the sinuses, coughing up stuff. And that is another thing. I filmed a clip earlier, breathing all the way in. I didn't know it was possible to breathe that deep. That shocks me every single time. I'm sorry, but <laughs> what? It's hard to explain because you don't know what I'm feeling, but it's like, I can breathe. <laughs> I'm like, is this how normal people breathe? What? Usually if I do that, especially that deep, I would go into a coffee bit for sure. I guess one of the biggest things we will see is whether laughing and coughing does anything. Every time I laugh, like really laugh, I go into a coughing fit. It'll be interesting to see if that changes. That literally frightens me. Never thought I'd be able to breathe that deep again. I think because I've had like 26 years of breathing the same and it's slowly getting worse and then you just become used to not breathing properly, but... weird to be able to breathe. This morning I went for a run because I was like, I kind of want to test these burnt boys out. I was still a little bit tight, but I was less tight than I normally am. But this morning I have been coughing stuff up again and it's been fairly loose, but it's been easier to get up. I also didn't feel sick. I actually felt hungry, which was a nice change. <laughs> Is so crackly. <laughs> I just went for a walk. But my sinuses, man. Like, I might need to lie down. It's really bad. This is unbelievable. This is the worst they've been in months. Pressure is really, really strong. We are on day four for the last three days when I've woken up. I don't feel fatigued. Like, normally I'd wake up and be like exhausted. But for the last three days, I haven't. I don't know if that was a temporary thing or. It was. I've been coughing a bit, not much up. <coughs> okay, that's good. 2.58. Pretty sure 76 is the highest I've ever blown on this machine. Up by 6% in four days. That's pretty impressive. But again, I do feel there's more still quite a lot of crackly crackles. Let's see if the sinuses go bad again. <laughs> they did. <laughs> they Five. The sinus pain is horrendous. Probably the worst I've ever had. When I breathe in deep, feels like there's resistance there. Oh, I can feel it. It's in here. It's in. It's in the the right. <laughs> my right um, lower lung. I think I have asthma. So I keep getting really tickly chin, itchy chin. If I start to feel that, then I know my chest is going to go tight, and I'm going to start coughing. <laughs> I can still feel those crackles. Crackly, crackly. <coughs> I just don't want to cough anymore. When I do the deep breaths in is when I'm getting the itchy chin. <laughs> wow, the crackles, man. I am feeling vibrating. God, I almost matched my top, don't I? Day seven. So I have champagne here. My brother bought a house in France, so congratulations to Rob and Frankie. My sinuses are still hurting. I went for a walk today. I like started the walk and I was like, I just want to sit down. <laughs> Had a lot of lethargy. Lethargy? Lethargy? Lethargy! I haven't coughed much today, but I do know that when I am out and there are other people around, I don't breathe in to the extent that I would, which would trigger a cough. Gonna do the lung function. See if there's any crackles this time, because we always get a crackle. 
Okay, that did feel more powerful and I didn't hear as many crackles. Oh, <laughs> nice pretty face. This is the highest number I've ever gotten on this machine. And it's 2.63. So much of this is based on the lung function numbers and it's not necessarily about that. I am very aware of how uh, lucky I am to be at that range. Very grateful for my current health. I'm very grateful for this drug and I'm grateful for champagne. Oh my. What? I still haven't told anyone. I didn't want to tell anyone until I had a more rounded understanding on how I feel about it, on the drug, on, on what it's done for me. Sometimes it's best to just take it one day at a time. My sinuses have been really bad since starting. I'm still getting post nasal drip down the back of my throat. For a couple of evenings when I breathe in there's like this little wheeze in my chest and I'm like hello? <laughs> I don't think I've experienced that when my chest is normal is what I'm trying to say. I started on Cipro because like I said my chest hasn't been right for a couple of weeks and then after I stopped Cipro the nausea um left. I went on the treadmill a couple of times and the last time I went on I didn't need an inhaler which I always have to do because I always get quite tight. <laughs> that feels much more powerful. Oh crikey. Do I just wet myself? <laughs> CF life incontinence. I'm feeling extremely grateful that I've not, oh, I've not experienced any side effects. Bringing stuff up, I've never been able to get it up and out, but with Captrio it made it so much more easier to get out, which I've never experienced. So I definitely tried going into this with no expectations. However, I realise now I did have one very big expectation. It was to just stop coughing. I'm not cough as much as I would normally because I've had so many people say that they no longer cough and I'm like, what? Coughing anxiety for me has been a real big thing for so many years, especially in the coronavirus universe at the moment. <laughs> so we started on 2.37 and now we are 2.66 and I think it's important to remember that this is based on my age, weight, height and sex I believe. It's gone from 70% up to 78%. If 78 is a new baseline, wow that's just hit me. <laughs> so so incredibly grateful um for where my health is at incredibly lucky so that was pretty much the first week on cav trio now there are a couple of things that i want to mention with this because as we know with cf mucus gets everywhere in your lungs in your pancreas it's it's everywhere brian brian or what i don't know a brian and something that needs to be talked about is the fact that in women with cf thick mucus also lines your cervix which can sometimes make it harder to get pregnant but not on calf trio oh no 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 because a lot of people now have been finding it easier to get pregnant the calf trio boom wear protection guys because what Captrio does is essentially the same thing it does in the lungs it breaks down that mucus and just like you can get a lung purge you can also get a cervical mucus purge which wasn't mentioned in the booklet or by any doctors fortunately i was aware prior to starting through all of my research on the facebook groups this may be tmi for some people but honestly this stuff needs to be talked about because this is exactly what i experienced on the first evening like 11 hours after my first dose there was suddenly a lot of cervical mucus coming out and it was quite watery and thin. That continued for about two days and then on the fourth day, it was weird, it was weird. I was like, what is happening here? What is this? Because it was all um, thick and stringy and I was like, have I just birthed mozzarella? So I just wanted to mention that in case anyone was like, what the hell is going on here? It's totally normal. And the last thing I want to mention is I made a conscious choice not to post on social media about starting Caftrio. And I just want to explain why. Because it was exactly the same principle as it was for Sim Kirby. My heart goes out to the people who cannot take this drug for whatever reason. And perhaps they might see something on social media and that's got to be hard. It was hard for me so I kind of roughly knew what they were going through and I did not want to be the person to trigger someone else. Now, people are well in their right to celebrate. That's not what I'm saying here. But you know what it was? It was the feeling of being left out, of being left behind, that loneliness. And I know exactly what it's like to feel left out, feel left behind, and feel lonely. I've got a degree in that. Shit.
Just to clarify here, the people who can't take cafeteria are not being left behind. There is so much stuff in the pipelines. It's honestly so exciting. But anyway, that's the reason why I've chosen not to post on social media about it. And you might be like, okay, it's a little bit hypocritical making two episodes out of this cafeteria business, but at least with a YouTube video, someone can click on it if they want to. Obviously, I'm gonna have to post something on social media to let people know that this video is out and next week's episode. But really, that's gonna be it from me. So that's it for episode one. Stay tuned. Episode two, coming next Wednesday. Now I've lost it, I've lost it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Socks are weird. Who is Brian?